One thing that was striking at that dialogue table, and that we have all come to acknowledge, is that the core of our collective moral sense is put to test every day by many narrow identities of politics and breakdown of law and order in our dear country. This forces us to take sides, or at least be sympathetic to these ideologies that continue to divide us. Even the first sitter and the neutral bystanders seem to have shifted positions. It is said that a boat does not know who the leader is. When it turns over, everyone gets wet. The heinous act of barbarism, corruption, violent extremism, and the rise of ethnic militia groups that is involving our dear country, enveloping our dear country, whether propelled by ethnicity, religious intolerance, or sheer bigotry, will only lead to a meltdown that will engulf all of us, unless some influential stakeholders and leaders with moral authority, like we are fortunate to have assembled here today, deliberately promote dialogue, national cohesion, and hope. This expanded retreat is a sequel to the earlier meeting in Washington, D.C. But we hope the results and the next step from this meeting will reflect on a grander scale our resolve and determination to focus on and together fight the existential challenge facing all of us. Sadly, there exists a wide gulf of trust deficit among the many divides that make our dear country. Very few are trusted around dialogue level. <clears throat> So-called influencers have betrayed the young ones that now they thumb their nose at the heritage we once held so dear. And they stand against traditional institutions that give us the unique identity we pride ourselves by. We must take deliberate steps to close the gap between the aggrieved and the leaders by identifying trusted, objective, and reliable moderators who must coordinate the discordant tones into a harmonious melody that will bring about peace and reconciliation. A hungry man is an angry man is a popular proverb in Nigeria. But in it lies core of the many agitation, militancy, pockets of security crisis we are faced with in this country today. People are hungry. And in such track reality, the young, and indeed everyone, we hop on any chariots that promises better, even when they are not sure what the better will mean. Because hope is sustaining. Hope that things may get easier if they do something about it. Hope that maybe if they rouse, rouse attention, someone somewhere will pay attention to their plight. There is hunger, and hunger is in the land. I fear for a country that will have to grapple with these untamed energies in the next five to ten years. And that fear comes from the fact that these able-bodied young men are veritable tools in the hands of agitators and non-state actors. What is the value of life to a hungry young man who sees no future in the horizon? and no light at the end of the long, dark tunnel. He or she will sell his soul to the devil for any level of gratification or self-worth. It is a thickening time bomb, and no one knows when or where it will go off. We are fortunate 
to have people on this dialogue table. In this room today, who carry a measure of authority and who we trust will make a difference without sentiments. These are many more societal influencers like you all out there, men and women of unquestionable character that have the capacity to come up with expected results while articulating the needs of the aggrieved, who also have the capacity to bring government and the opposition to a discussion. Once these people are at the table, dialogue must begin immediately. We must identify and connect with them. At Vision Africa, our community development strategy is simple, reached the unreached by sharing God's love. Aside from our radio programs, our annual medical outreach, prison outreach, one of our strong foundations in our interfaith, peace and reconciliation model. With this model, we continue to expand and deepen community action in support of interfaith understanding and peace in our local communities by recognizing that everyone plays central roles in sustaining the openness on which development and prosperity Recording in progress. depends. As we renew our commitment to peace by breaking down barriers between communities, religions, and region, I sincerely hope that this will ultimately improve dialogue, transparency, and peaceful coexistence for us and our children because this is our home. We are human, only through humanity of others, for no one is ultimately self-sufficient. Your Eminence, I want to once again thank you as our Father and thank you for, the, for your messages of peace all these years. And we believe with men of goodwill and conscience, we will build a nation and we will build a people and we will reconcile people and we will have better tomorrow for our children.